Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. You guys, so anyways, I'm over here on the floor. So a lot of you guys really liked the video that I did on the whole mocking Trish Paddis, you know. I would say 95% of you guys liked it. There was that small percentage, honey. And y'all seen what I posted on Instagram that were in their feelings. And there was some crazy trans lady going off on me. And we're just going to, you know what I'm saying, ignore her and just send her some positive energy, honey. Because we are blessed and highly favored over here. So nothing formed against me shall prosper. So anyways, a lot of you guys, one of the things I got, a lot of messages I got from people that you guys really liked the whole me just on the floor talking um, and, you know, doing like a vlog style. And I've never been like a vlogger type YouTuber just because I feel like my life, I don't know, I just feel like it's not super interesting. I'm not necessarily going like to these opulent places. Usually when I travel out of town, it's for work or YouTube or to go shoot, film, you know, stuff like that. Um, and besides that, when I'm in Minnesota, I'm just doing my thing as a mom, right? But I thought it was cool. You know, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed sitting on the floor. And I was like, okay, well, let's do some, you know, vlog type stuff. Maybe we can call this nighttime chats where I just come on. Even if it's just once a week, I'm just, you know, talking to the camera. You know, not on some, hey, you guys, breaking news. Just talking about just regular, everyday, you know, just different things. So if you guys have any particular topics, let me know. But I just wanted to let you guys know I did go yesterday. I went to go see Joker. So I did go see it. It was pretty good. It was definitely a psychological thriller. If you thought this was going to be like a Batman part two, you were sadly mistaken. It was definitely a psychological thriller. I thought Joaquin Phoenix did such an awesome job. It was good to see him in a new movie role, especially with something like the Joker. I've always liked the Phoenix Brothers. If you guys remember River Phoenix, he was like a heartthrob in like the 90s. He was in Stand By Me. So I've always been a really big fan of his. And as I got older and I I started going back and researching stuff on River Phoenix's life, I realized how conscious, how woke, and how aware he was. He was talking about vaccination and being against vaccines back in like the 90s when that was like literally unheard of, him and Lisa Bonet. And what I've learned, are there warnings about introducing these alien microorganisms into our children's blood and the long-term effects, which could be trivial or they could be quite hazardous and they could be just allergies or asthma or sleep disorders, or they could be cancer, leukemia, multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. sudden infant death syndrome. It's very scary and it's very serious. And I, and I think because I, I felt <coughs> wrong doing it, is, that's why I didn't do it. And, uh, you know, I mean, we have to think twice. Why are our children getting these <coughs> diseases? Why and what is the uh, biochemical legacy of the vaccination? How long does it last and what might it be? It's Effect, yes. yeah. You're putting something into your baby's bloodstream. Everybody ought to think about that twice. Uh, we yes. did this official stamp, and uh, someone's designated uh, to to give us this information, which isn't really really known about or researched, you know. And we find out the hard way, you know. No one knew that, you know, the pill in its original state, you know, for women, birth control. I don't want to get into this. This is a big one, but was was so <laughs> detrimental to to health and, and and the hormonal imbalance and all of the above. Let's bring out John Robbins. He's a Okay. So he was definitely a really, really deep dude. It was too bad that he ended up, you know, having the drug overdose and dying. But it was definitely cool to see his brother, you know what I'm saying, continue the her legacy. And he did a good job as the Joker. I thought the movie was really good. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it. So I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't. But I really enjoyed it. It's definitely, when you leave, it's like so much to digest. It's definitely a think piece more than it is like, you know, an action, you know, CGI, fighting, Marvel, DC. It's definitely not that type of vibe. But there's a lot of like just really, really good scenes in there that just really make you think. There was also a lot of subliminal stuff stuff a lot of new world order them versus us rich versus poor so you know i i felt like there was like a lot of underlying messages in the movie but i had a really good time seeing it yesterday so today um i ended up going on a lunch date with my oldest son because i just felt like you know he's 18 now and 
he's been so busy with college. He's been at school. He's been working 40 hours a week. And so we just really got a chance to catch up. And that's one thing I want to say to people who are parents out there, especially young parents like myself. And, you know, most of the people on YouTube have, like, little children. So sometimes that's why I don't feel like I fit in with a lot of other bloggers because they have, like, you know, two- and three-year-olds. And it's like, my baby is 18. You know what I'm saying? He's, like, a grown man now. So... That's the part that's hard is still, you know, just trying to still be mom, but then let him have that freedom because, you know, he's becoming a man. So it's just different. And, you know, we have our conflicts, you know, like mother and son and, you know, we argue and, you know, go back and forth sometimes and stuff like that. And so, you know, we just been kind of going through some things. And so one thing I will say is that I love the fact that my extended family like just plays a big part in my little family with me and the boys. So it's like I can always talk to my mother-in-law. Even though me and my ex-husband are not together, I still call her my mother-in-law. I still call her mom. And I can talk to my biological mom. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I have people, my brothers and stuff like that, who I can always turn to for advice and stuff. And, you know, my mother-in-law was like, you know, I just think that, you know, he feels like he's busy with school and he doesn't really get to see you and you don't really get to see him, that you guys just need to, you know, take a break, slow down from everything and just reconnect. And I'm really glad we did that. Like I had such a good time just catching up with him, seeing how college is for him and just talking to him. So parents, you know, don't forget, I know we get so busy, you guys, when I tell you, you know, between just trying to edit and keep up YouTube content, I'm constantly on the phone constantly dealing with business meetings, talking to farmers, talking to agricultural people, you know, just everything I'm putting into the skincare line, talking to, you know, just different manufacturers, because my goal, when all this is said and done, I want my products in stores. I want my stuff mass produced. I'm thinking big. So I'm like talking to like people you wouldn't even imagine, you know what I'm saying? Always let people underestimate you. You know what I'm saying? Never tell people what you're up to. Let them underestimate you. And then that way when you do what you set out there to do, it just shocks people. So because of like just the meetings and, you know, just these high level people I've been having to like just talk to and, you know, pick their brain and get pricing and just get different things on what I need. It's just taking me away from, you know, things that can be very important, which is family. And you never want to be pulled, you know what I'm saying, one direction or another. You always want, you know, there to be like some type of medium. And so, you know, I was like, we need to just slow down. He went to work at like 6 o'clock this morning. I'm like, okay, when you get home from work, we need to do lunch. You know what I'm saying? We need to catch up. I want to know what's going on in your life. We need to talk. We need to reconnect. And we did that today. And so we went to um, we went to Uptown, Minneapolis, and we went to um, Stella's Fish House, which is one of my favorite restaurants in the Twin Cities. So we went there for lunch, and we just had like just a wonderful conversation and just talked. And, you know, I just learned more about what he was involved in, what's going on in his world. And he learned about what's going on in my world and, you know, why I'm so busy and why I grind as hard as I grind, you know, because like I had to tell him, like, I'm not guaranteed to be here forever. You know what I'm saying? Especially dealing with a chronic illness. Like I want to leave something. I want to leave a legacy for you and your brother. I want to leave you guys with generational wealth. Yes, you're going for your degree. Yes, you're going to, you know, get a job and stuff like that. But in the event it doesn't pan out, there, I want there to be something for you guys to fall back on. So, you know, just like really explaining that to him, like, you know, why I work as hard as I work. And I thank him really appreciating that because I'm not just sitting around depending on some guy or, you know, being a gold digger. I'm out here getting it on my own. So that's what I just really wanted him to like walk away with. So it was cool. We had like just an awesome time as mother and son. So yeah, parents, don't forget, you know what I'm saying? Son, daughter, you know, at times we feel like, oh, well, my kid is 15, 16. They're grown. They're not grown. They still need us. They still need you to be there. I have so many young people that DM me all the time, email me. You know, me and my mom don't talk. Me and my dad don't talk. You're like a mom to me. And it's like, you know, I'm flattered and that means a lot to me, but I can't be their parent because I'm still over here trying to parent these two. You know, so I think as parents, sometimes we need to slow down and just make sure that we allow that reconnection with our babies because they're the most important things, you know what I'm saying? Working 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, that's great. We got to put food on the table, but remember why we're putting that food on the table, and that's because of those children. So we have to give them that time. We have to give them that attention. So, 
And it just, you know, just being able to spend like those past four hours with him was just amazing. And then after we went out to eat, we stopped by uh, my mother-in-law's apartment and we sat over there with her and, you know, kicked it with her for a bit, talked to her and stuff. So it was just really nice just to hang out, just the two of us. Because now that he's in college, it's like, you know, he's so busy. It's usually me and my younger son, you know, running around, going to basketball games, dropping him off at practice, just, you know, all types of stuff. So a lot of times... When we do stuff, it's always either the three of us or it's just me and the youngest one because the oldest one has been so busy. So today it was just us. So when my youngest called, he's like, Mom, where are you at? And I'm like, oh, I'm at lunch with your brother. Oh, I thought he was downstairs. I was like, no, we're in Minneapolis. We're having lunch. We're doing a mother and son thing. So he was like, oh, just the two of you guys. Cool. So, you know, that was really fun. That was really fun. So if that's one thing I can tell you guys. Definitely spend time with your babies and follow up with them no matter how old they get. You know, it's very important to them. They need that, you know, reassurance that you still care and that you still want to know what's going on in their lives and that you're proud of them. You know, everybody likes that positive affirmation. So we can't forget to do that even as our kids get older. So at times I have to be reminded myself, you know what I'm saying, to do that. The same way I'm still on top of the younger one, I still got to be on top of the older one, you know, even though he's getting you know, grown. And it's crazy because it's like, I'm the same age he is now when I had him. So it's like, you know, it just makes me feel like, dang, how like I was such a kid back then, you know, having a baby and just trying to figure out life and trying to find a place to stay. And, you know, I've come a long way and I'm proud of myself. You know what I'm saying? Having done all that as a teen mom to see where I was at to where I'm at now and it's like, I, like I tell him, I hope he just takes like my struggles and everything we went through those first like 10 years of his life, you know, to where I'm at now as, you know, something for him to like be proud of, you know, for him to like want to emulate and just do right and not, you know, go down the same mistakes that I made, you know, as a young person. So, yeah, so that's how my day went. It went really, really well. So this is my first nighttime chat. I hope you guys enjoy it. We will definitely have more. I have one more I want to do. I don't want to make this video too long. So this will be nighttime chat one, and I'm going to come back and talk about something else. Okay, so hold tight. <laughs>